Um, hi, everyone. I will do it in English, too. My name is Boris Gifo. I'm working as a cybersecurity engineer. I'm currently based in Hamburg. And I'm, I'm going to talk about the role of technology in reducing corruption in Africa. Um, I'll start with a question. What do you think China, Switzerland, Panama, in, and South Africa have in common? They are all countries that, that were listed in recent corruption scandals. Actually, corruption isn't just a matter of a country. According to Transparency International, uh, corruption is a global problem. A good way to, uh, to see it is to look at the um, Corruption Perception Index. This is a ranking released by Transparency International. And um, as you can see on the ranking, there's a region um, which countries um, are usually at the bottom line. This is actually my, my homeland, Africa. According to Transparency International, six out of the 10 most corrupt countries in the world are located in Africa. Uh, this is actually a very big problem. Um, as, um, I'm originally from Cameroon, and I have personally have experience of it. And uh, I have seen women like that. She's living in a slum. She's doing her best, and she will do anything possible to provide a better future, future to, her, to, her, to her baby, for, to her child. Um, she is living in a slum. That means she doesn't have access to basic facilities, um, such as hospitals, universities, sanitation, clean water, and so on. You know what? Those facilities are actually already built, but only on the paper. In the reality, a lot of money um, has been on the paper invested to build a lot of infrastructures in developing countries. But in fact, they all have vanished because of corruption. Um, this woman will then be selling on, as a street vendor there and not having access to all of that only because of corruption. Um, as someone from Africa, and I study here at the University of Technology of Troyes, um, I've, got, I've got a lot of access to technology. And this kind of technology gadgets have been changing my own life in a tremendous way. The same thing is actually happening in Africa. Let's look at this man. He's a shepherd from Kenya, Masai Mara. Um, the, the, the gadget that he has is not just a, sm a simple gadget. The, the smartphone he's using is actually helping him a lot in improving his productivity. Thanks to the smartphone, he can get access to information like um, the weather forecast, or um, he can contact um, other ship, ship huts across the country and even other clients in Nairobi, the capital city of, of Kenya. And it can so in, in, uh, have more income. And this, is, this, this kind of stories is really happening very often in Africa. I will give you another example. Um, this is Gifted Mom. This is an application developed by a Cameroonian engineer. Um, it's a very simple application um, whose objective is to reduce mortal in, um, uh, infant mortality. Um, I will try to maybe put it into context. Um, in a lot of rural areas or remote areas in Africa, and in, in many other developing areas, um, it's really hard for pregnant women or new, new mothers to access proper sanitation or to get um, uh, good advices on how to deal with the baby or to deal with the pregnancy. The conclusion is that the uh, mortality uh, rate is high for new baby, newborn babies. And this engineer just thought of an application that can help 
connect um, medical specialists based in cities and people living in remote areas or in slums, like the woman we saw before. And thanks to that, a lot of women could have their baby safely and could get the right advices at the right time. And this is, uh, this is actually game changing. Um, technology is actually um, uh, making a big difference in Africa. And I'm not, only the only, I'm not the only one who has noticed it. Even international uh, internet companies are also getting away of that. This is, for example, Mark Zuckerberg. Um, he's not in Silicon Valley. He's actually in Lagos, uh, Nigeria. And he went there not to give development aid, but to uh, learn about local um, startups. Actually, the startup ecosystem in Africa is currently booming. And if you haven't put Africa on the map of tech hubs, um, you should consider starting it now. Um, let, this is a, um, a look of the trending ventures of a platform that I'm part of. The platform is called Venture, Venture Capitalist for Africa, VC4A.com. And here you have, the platform is there to help local startups in Africa grow and also to help them get some finances, fund, fundings, and even exposures. And on the platform, at the moment I'm talking, there are 5,000 trending ventures, and the number is growing. Um, and not only startups are um, getting interested into um, technology, um, government are also seeing the influence and the advantages of technology. And um, in, the next, um, in the next remaining minutes, I'm going to tell you why I believe this can really make a big difference in reducing corruption. Um, as a first example, I will bring you to East Africa, Rwanda. This is a website, um, an e-government platform. Um, the, web five, well, the website is from the R Rwandan gov government. Um, it's actually a simple website. The objective is every citizen can go on the website and know exactly uh, what to ask for and ask for any services to know, he can know exactly how much the service is going to cost, he can know exactly um, how long it's going to take, and he can actually get the service in due time. There is close to no access to people, like it's all automated, and thanks to this automation, the exposure to corruption decreased a lot. Uh, with such initiatives, um, Rwanda could go from, in 10 years, from one of the most corrupted countries in the world to one of the least corrupted countries, not just in Africa, but also in the world. I we can maybe uh, have a quick look at this form. Here, um, it's a form to ask for a birth certificate. Uh, as you see, uh, you have access to the supporting documents that you need. Uh, you know exactly what steps you have to take you know the time you're going to need, the processing time, and the money you need to pay. And there is no hidden cost. That means then no corruption. I will show you um, maybe, um, I'll put it into perspective. You can maybe understand why I really think this kind of initiatives can change the way we see a lot of African countries. This is the ranking of Rwanda in the, in the Corruption Perception Index in the last 10 years, in around the last 10 years. You can see that in 20, 2006, it was ranked 121, and it's currently ranked 45. This is a better ranking than countries like Italy, uh, Croatia, or Slovenia. Um, there's a second thing I want to talk about. Corruption is also helping Africa um, in the way that he helped the civil society to take actions in a way never seen before. Um, maybe this can be one of the best examples that we can think of. Um, the, the Arab Spring. 
Those are Tunisian people. Um, they just wanted to, ma to, to demonstrate against um, the, corrupted, the corruption um, that were in place in the country. Um, and they wanted to, 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 um, to say, no, we don't want it anymore. And they didn't use any kind of weapon, they just used the internet, social network. And they could organize such a massive revolution. So as you can see, technology didn't just help take this picture, it actually helped make the revolution. The same thing is happening all over, all over Africa. This is um, uh, Kenya. This is Boniface Mwanzi, an uh, anti-corruption activist in Rwanda. He has been, um, uh, the police came to him a lot of time uh, because of his, um, because of the way he was actually uh, uh, letting, raising awareness about corruption in the country. The government was feeling attacked by him, and the only tool he used was actually a photograph and social network. Um, I'm going to also talk a little, a little bit about my own country. Um, this is, those are Cameroonian act activists as well. Uh, ten years ago, they have been doing the same thing for a lot of, a lot of time. Every time when the president go to Switzerland, he, he, he goes to Switzerland or to Europe, they try just to do a small demonstration. And uh, ten years ago, it will have go on notice. But nowadays, like one year ago, they did the same thing, and they just posted a video on YouTube, and everyone was aware of, this, this, that, of what was happening. So. Technologies are actually helping putting forward the democracy and helping educating the, the people about corruption and about um, corrupted officials. Um, the third thing I'm going to talk about is technology actually bring money. Let's have a look at this website. This is uh, Jumia. I took the Moroccan. They, they are actually in a lot of countries, but. I like Morocco, so I just um, put Jumia Morocco there. This is a website, uh, the, the equivalent of Amazon. They are currently actually in maybe uh, 10 or 20 countries in Africa, and they're actually growing every, every day. They recently raised like $400 million on the international market. And this kind of technologies are bringing jobs in the country, and governments are aware that technology and telecommunications and so on are bringing job and money. And because of that, um, uh, they're actually, they know that they need, to invest, they, do, they need to invest in the area. And this is having a, a side effect because the more they invest in the area, the more you have, um, in the government, you have more, um, more services that goes online. For example, paying tax, taxes, or for example, paying fees for universities. And so the things goes really fast, and the incentive to pay corruption, to, to pay bribes, is actually going away. I will, see, I will give you a simple example. Um, if um, I need one day just to, to get my ID card, I will certainly be more, uh, more willing to pay bribes to get it fast, than if I need just two minutes. And technology is actually making it happen. Thanks to technology, you just need 10 minutes, two minutes to do to services that usually take two, two days. And it's actually helping even bringing the confidence into the economy. So as a conclusion, I would say that um, corruption and even poverty are being uh, reduced thanks to technology. And Africans, are actually um, working hard to resolve local problems using local solutions and technology. And I find it really exciting. And I should say that, yeah, Africa is not a country. It's a continent of 55 countries. And there are certainly very different history and uh, success stories and even um, economies in the continent. Not every, con not every country is replicating the, um, the examples of the example of Rwanda. 
but what is what is sure and what is true um, is that the population is young and the population is um, educated, and uh, we can have a uh, we can have a feeling of it when we go on websites like VC for Africa. And for that reason, I really think that technology is actually shaping the future of Africa, and certainly uh, might change the way you see the continent in the coming years. Thank you very much.